This time on the show, Matt kicks off his series on virtualization, while Darren and Shannon end the Wii Homebrew series with backups and emulation. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Squarespace, Gamefly, and viewers like you. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Matt Lustock. I'm Shannon Morse, and this is Kirby. And this is your weekly dose of Techno Lust, as we call it. We've got an excellent show for you guys tonight. Uh, a lot of Wii homebrew stuff, some virtualization finally. I mean, people have been hounding you over that. Yeah, I got a lot of emails about virtualization. So finally, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's actually time to appease the masses. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into, um, it's going to be a whole series. Ooh, like, excited. from start to finish. Yeah. And I'm going to do a little like... A little brain dump stuff? A little brain dump. And then we're also going to do a little like uh, homebrew virtualization <gasps> instead of like buying all the kind of shit. I love homebrew. I know, right? Yeah. Guess what I've been getting a lot of emails about? You fuck up. Yeah, I kind of messed up the editing last episode. So enjoy the director's cut. Speaking was, of which, there was, was a good idea that came out of that. Yeah, what was that? A looper DVD. You know, I Behind have the been, scene DVD. I have been keeping that DVD. Oh, you know, I've had some. Th we'll we'll talk offline because I, I have some ideas about like lighting the video, the audio, the mixing. See, the I'm editing. looking out for you oh, guys. Cool, cool. All right, a little beyond a little because this is a homebrew. You want to talk about homebrew? This is homebrew HD video production for like less than what a single lens costs the big boys. Hooray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Our big brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking it real up in Williamsburg, VA. Well, That's see, the thing the thing is, is like if if if. Like, the Revision 3 Studio uh -huh. isn't portable. No, that's so, awesome that they because it's in a box. So what's going to happen is, anytime they want to do, like, something remote, like uh -huh. multi-cam, multi-audio. Yeah, yeah, they need switching. They're going to have to come to us and what? be like, hey, can we rent your shit? I'm going to be like, right. yo. We should go to okay. New York and, and live switch the Dignation stuff or whatever, man. It would be awesome. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. they got to get the, the that, I, That's HD not a leak. Big. I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh -uh. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So, um... I like turtles. Let's go <laughs> find out what's going on with Wee Homebrew. I'm kicking it over to Shannon. Hey guys, I'm back this week. I'm not bringing you a hack this week, but I'm bringing you some homebrew news and a quick recap of what we've done so far as far, the, as, far as the Nintendo Wii goes. First off, Team Tweezers. You guys remember them from the Homebrew channel. They've been working on BootMe. BootMe basically brings you this low-level console control over your entire Wii. It boots up before the system menu, so you have that control. They've done it already on 12 different Wiis, and they haven't bricked any of them yet. So they're bringing out the beta version in the next few weeks. You can expect that. Also, Juan and Coco, he was the guy that did the USB loader. He just released this thing. It's this homebrew Wii app that lets you back up your game discs onto a USB hard drive or an SD card. It's pretty cool. It lets you run games straight from your SD card instead of using the game disc for every single thing. So you can just leave that in there and play all your games straight from there. So last week, you remember, I brought you the Wii Disc Dumper by Nitrotux. It's basically the same thing as the USB loader, except it takes a good 10 hours and six different parts for a certain kind of game discs. The USB loader, takes one-tenth of that time and only one ISO file. It's great, everything's packed into one file, and Darren is going to be showing us how to use this to get Wii 720p on your computer. And last off for the news, I wanted to tell you about Dolphin. On the 13th, they released build 2962. This is brand new, it has open AL audio support, frame dump for AVI, and they included an even powerful, more powerful rumble for your Xbox 360 controller. Sounds good to me. All right, now for our quick recap. The first thing we talked about when we were talking about Nintendo Wii was the Zelda Twilight hack. It's awesome. It has this special save game that causes this buffer overflow and code execution. All this cool stuff basically just brings homebrew on your, on your machine. That's the good part. The bad part, Nintendo just released System Menu 4.0. This sucks because if you haven't updated already, you can get the Zelda Twilight hack 
But if you have already updated and you don't have it yet, you cannot use the Twilight hack to get Homebrew on your machine. Although, if you haven't updated yet and you have it and you want to update, you can because it won't break the Homebrews that you already have on your machine. Although, I would recommend staying on the old, old mode just because it's probably much better that way. Just saying. All right, the Homebrew channel. This basically lets you launch homebrew apps from SD card, and it makes it very easy. So there's no need for the Twilight hack for every single game that you want to play that's homebrew on your Wii. One of the most recent things we talked about was the homebrew browser. It lets you download all sorts of homebrew apps and games, everything you want, straight from the Wii's internet connection. So you don't have to move your SD card from your computer and back again every single time. If you want to know more about homebrew apps, you can find information and apps that you can download over at the webrew.org wiki. And if you want to check out everything that we've done step by step so far, you can go back to the previous episodes and definitely check those out, download them, or you can check out our show notes over at snubsy.com and hack5.org. I want to tell you about this month's LAN party. It's going to be a fun one. We're playing Doom 2 Skull Tag at doom.hack5.org on the 25th. I can't wait to see you guys there. It's going to be a lot of classic, fun, double barrel shotgun for the win. So anyway, you can get all the details about that at hack5lan.squarespace.com. That's where you can find the wads, where you can suggest a PWAD for us to play, or you know, just find out where you get Skull Tag and just, just bitch about who's best in it. Anyway, let me direct your attention over to the Squarespace page though because they are a fine sponsor of this particular segment and I want to show you a nifty feature you can do here. So I'm on my Squarespace page and I'm logged in and it's as easy as clicking over here to modify my navigation. I'm going to add a new page and I'm going to show you a nifty feature here where I can actually create a map. So I'm going to configure my map. I'm going to call it the Epic Land Party and I'm going to bring that down here and I already have a Google Maps API, it was really easy to get and I'm going to give it an address, I'm going to say 23188, that's our zip code here at the Hack House, Williamsburg, Virginia, there we go, awesome and I'm going to call this, you know, the uh, Hack 5 Epic LAN Party and, you know, check some buttons, sounds good and then create a page and I go over here to Epic LAN Party now and there we go, I have a Google Map and you know, if I if I actually had like a street address, you could click this and be like, you know, find directions to it. So if you're doing like an event or something, this would be excellent. Say for instance, if Hack Five had like a meetup at uh, Bush Gardens in the middle of the summer, I'm just saying that would be kind of cool. And we would have maps to like hotels and and the theme park and all sorts of stuff right there on the Google Maps. Anyway, Squarespace plans start at just eight dollars a month and you can get 10% off the life of your service over there when you check out at squarespace.com with coupon code HACK5. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it over to Matt, who is down at his office teaching us a little bit about virtualization. Hey guys, today we are in my office, actually the conference room of my office here in Williamsburg. And uh, after the mountains of email that I've gotten, I finally decided that we're going to start our virtualization segment. I know I've done a couple little things here and there with VMware Server and you know Workstation and, and some other things, but today we're actually going to get into the enterprise uh, virtualization segments. It's going to be a whole big series. It's probably going to consume at least a month, maybe two. I don't know, don't hold me to that. Um, but I've got Paul the camera guy who has graciously uh, tagged along and is filming uh, my little whiteboard segment here. Now, you guys may be asking yourself, okay, I understand about virtualization. Uh, you can put a couple things per box. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. Um, besides you know, cost savings and, and things like that, what else is there that goes into virtualization? Well, there's machine virtualization. There it's the actual physical to virtual putting multiple boxes on a machine. There's also storage virtualization, storage area networks, things of that nature, Equalogic, EMC, all of these big companies have what they call storage virtualization which allows you to blah 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 blah. We'll get into that later. What I'm going to show you today is kind of a brief overview of the system that I have set up. Now it's not the most 
awesome system in the world and it's not even set up to best practices according to VMware or Zen. However, that being said, it works for us. Let me show you what we've got. In our server rack here, we've got 36 terabytes in three cages, okay, of SAN space. Now you may be asking yourself, why 36? How are they in three cages? Blah, 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 blah. We're using 12 terabytes per cage. There's 12 disks per cage, one terabyte drives each. Uh, they're SATA and SAS, 7200 RPMs. We wanted the maximum storage capacity that we could possibly have because each of our virtual machines needs to be at least 200 gigabytes. We run SAP and it's a beast. Beyond that, we have a single Dell R900. This is the beast of the beast uh, as far as Dell is concerned. This machine is enormous. It's got four processors. Uh, when I bought it, you can only get quad core processors, but now you can get six core processors. And you can load this beast up to, up to 256 gigs of RAM. On this box alone, we are running the equivalent of 45 physical machines. Um, so let's, let's take a step back and think about that real quick. So 45 physical machines. I've got 45 different installations of Windows on this single box. This box cost my company $23,000 go through your entire rack, fill it with 1U servers. How much is that going to cost? You got it? About $1,500 per server if you were going to go with what the equivalent of our 45 servers equals. You'd have to spend $1,500 per 1U in a 42U rack to equal what we have in 3Us. Um, the system itself, we give each machine four processing cores. We give each machine at least six gigs of RAM, here or there, uh, or abouts, and it runs like a champ. Now, this R900 here is directly connected via 10 gigabit Ethernet to uh, our SAN. So now we've got our SANs, which these two cages are actually linked, and this cage here, both in RAID 50. Uh, and we get a throughput on the disk spindles at about uh, 120 megabytes a second. Uh, and that's with all 45 physical machines on. Uh, so this is kind of an introductory, not really saying why or how or you know that kind of thing. I just wanted to give you guys a real world example of an implementation that is in a production environment. If this machine goes down, I am so fired. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so we'll get into some of the more specifics of VMware with Virtual Center Server, uh, v vMotion, and the uh, disaster recovery and high availability systems a little bit later in its series. But I just want to let you guys know that not only the cost to purchase the 45 physical machines, think about your cost to cool, to power, and to back up these machines. I'm going to leave you guys with that thought and uh, check back next week when we're actually going to get into the nitty gritty of how we're actually going to go about architecting the solution. It's a lot cheaper than you guys actually think. So uh, right now we're going to kick it over to Trivia and uh, take it away. All right, guys. So this week we aren't bringing you any trivia, but we are bringing you the Hack5 Monkey Wallpaper Contest. Basically, you can go over to hack5.org slash monkey contest, and you can find all the source files, the image files, the PNGs of the creation that Darren made, the, the monkey that you remember from a couple of episodes back. Yeah, the Interceptor Monkey. And, and then you win? can go ahead and post them up on the forums. We've already been seeing some excellent submissions on the forums, so we encourage Ooh, you yeah. to just break out the GIMP, break out the Photoshop, whatever it is you use, even JASC. Do they still make that? J-A-S-C. What's that? Uh, PaintShop Pro. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, hook it up, get involved, and you can win an excellent Sock Monkey kit 
uh, courtesy of SockMonkey.net or Hack5.SockMonkey.net to get them for less expensive than the Hack5 viewer. And yes, they are socks. They are actual, and, and it even comes with, dude, needle and thread included. Same thing with, we, we even got stuffing down here. So when you win this, dude, you got to put together an awesome sock monkey, stuff it, take pictures of it, send back to us. So This is the actual one that you will it. win. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Woohoo! So, the winner um, will be announced on episode 511, which will be on April 24th. And this week, we have a coding challenge. That's right. What goes better than monkeys than some software? So we're going to do a little bit of coding here. If you're into PHP, maybe some image magic, and have a Gmail account, you're going to love this. Uh, so you can get all the details over at hack5.org slash code challenge. And, you know, I would love to see some sweet source code. So um, find all the details there. and. Winners will be uh, announced on episode 512, and they can win the PHP reference book. This is by Mario Lurig. Awesome book if you're into PHP 5. So get into that over at those URLs. And this week's trivia contest monkey sponsor is GoDaddy. GoDaddy.com makes it easy to customize your own virtual dedicated server. Choose one of three popular plans, or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. Plus, if you use codes HACK1234 or 5, you can get a discount off of your order. Some restrictions apply. See the website for details and get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. All those are at HACK5.org coupons, too. Yes. In case you forget. Yeah. Rock on. What's going on? Well, I am going to go uh, across the set and go tell you guys how you can back up your Wii games to a hard drive, copy those nice. over to your computer, and start playing them in HD. You got the video card for it. And Kirby's breaking my computer. There we go. So I'm going to go <laughs> do that, and you have, here, take this from me. I'm hey. having way too much fun. Here we go. All right, guys, just like Shannon said at the top of the show, this Wii homebrew stuff just changes so fast, especially lately since System Menu 4.0 and the whole uh, SDHC card support and whatnot. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about, like we said last week, is doing uh, using the Dolphin emulator to play your Wii games at 720p in HD. Yeah, see, we can do it too. You know, not just the PS3 and 360. Just got to have like a $2,000 gaming rig, but woo, we're going to do it. Now, here's the thing. Last week, we showed you guys how to use uh, Technico, I forget his name. Anyway, we tried to, we showed you how to use a, um, a downloader that would like download the game disc in your Wii to an SD card, but you had to do it like multiple times because an SD card isn't big enough and all, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, some really cool new stuff come out um, just a few days ago as of taping, and that is the USB slash SD loader. Uh, this thing is sweet. It basically allows you to not only, you know, copy your, your games from your Wii discs over to something like, you know, like a removable hard drive or even a, you know, a USB thumb drive. Um, it allows you to even play them from them. So you can back up your entire Wii library to a hard drive, not have to change discs in and out. Really cool stuff. We're not, I mean, obviously there's, you know, um, potential for piracy there. We're not interested in that at all. What we're interested in is playing our own legit games that, you know, we own here on um, on our PC in much better graphics. So how do we get it all set up? How do we get the, uh, the USB loader installed so we can start backing up our games to ISO files, right? Well, there's a couple of requirements to, be, to get the USB uh, SD loader going. Take a look here. I've got the, uh, this is basically the package that uh, you'll find links to on our website. And there's four steps to the process here. First, we need to get the uh, USB loader WAD installed on our Wii. Um, pretty easy thing to do. We've talked about using the WAD loader before, and you're seeing it's a breeze to get installed. So once we have that installed, we also need to go through this CIOS 36 Rev 10 installer. And basically, you know, this is your standard boot.dol. If you're familiar with Homebrew Channel, you know, what we do is we come into here in an app, and I'm just going to use, I don't know, uh, SNES, or I'll use uh, Wii 2600 as an example. I'm going to just copy that folder and paste it. Come on, it's not that big, really. All right, so now, I, and I'm going to rename that to like CIOS 36. And yeah, see, we've got a bunch of stuff in here we don't need. So uh, the only thing that we really need to keep here is the meta, XML, and the, uh, not the about, the icon PNG. So that'll show up in our homebrew channel. Copy over that boot DOL, and then we edit this. Uh, XML file here, and we want to change this out instead of saying Wii 2600, we'll say the C 
iOS 36, yada, yada. Fill those out basically so it'll show up in your uh, homebrew channel and then go ahead through this installer. It's a really easy installer. It modifies your Wii so that we can you know, plug the USB hard drive into it and start having lots of fun. So now that we have those first two steps done, we need to make sure that we have this particular um, WAD file here in the root of our SD card that we're running all our homebrew off of. And that is the, C, uh, the iOS 3664V1024 WAD file. Just pop it in your root, you'd be all set. So this is what you end up here. You get this nice new channel called the USB loader channel. We're going to go ahead and start that here. And I have a 8 gig USB uh, thumb drive plugged into the back of the Wii there. You could put in a much bigger drive. And then we select our storage device, or either a mass storage, or we could put an SDHC card in there. I'm just going to go with the USB mass storage. And you can see here, not a whole lot of space, only get six gigs free, but there already I've backed up Mario Party 8. And I can go ahead and like launch it from here, or I can uh, hit plus with a Wii disk in the drive and start uh, downloading that to an ISO file on our USB stick here. So it takes about an hour for a single layer uh, Wii disk to download to your USB drive. And uh, keep in mind, your USB drive is going to be formatted in what's known as WBFS, Webrew File System. Now, I'm not really sure if it's ext 3 or what, but the thing is, you need this program on your Windows computer called WBFS Manager. And you can go ahead and grab that. And what it allows you to do here is select your drive, you load it up, uh, and, and you'll see all of the ISOs that you've downloaded to your um, to your, eight, your hard drive there, and you can even extract them. You click the little extract button down here, and it will allow you to save that ISO out. It even has the ability to, down, to uh, scour the net and download the cover art for your games, which is excellent. So once we've extracted our ISO here, you can see I've got the Dolphin 64-bit edition of the emulator up here, and I've got a couple of games I have legitimately downloaded here, like uh, my Zelda Wind Waker, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and uh, Mario Party 8, and I can show you right here I actually legitimately own all of those. Okay, so um, so let's go ahead and dive right into the emulator. So I'm going to launch Dolphin, really easy to configure, like for example if I wanted to change my uh, controller options. I've got a sweet little checkbox here. Uh, I just plugged in the USB version of the Xbox 360 gamepad and I just checked this box that says enable X360 and that's it, or I map my controls to whatever else. I can even do Wiimote, which is pretty nifty. Lots of options in there to have fun with. Anyway, uh, all I really need to do is go ahead and open up. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you, uh, show you Mario Party here. And I'm going to load a save, because it's got save states, right? So I've got a save state here already going. Go on. All right, so I've started up Mario Party 8 here, and as you can tell, not every game works perfectly. I got a bunch of graphical glitches here, but you know, it, it's still playable, but it's probably not the, the, the best choice, really. Um, I actually went ahead and spent all the time to download the dual layer disc here, the Super Mario Brothers Smash, or Super Smash Brothers Brawl. A lot of fun game, except I have the NTSC version because I live in you know, the United States, and the emulator really only supports the PAL version right now. So I'm looking on PlayAsia or somewhere to actually buy the PAL version because you know I'm not downloading an ISO from TPB uh, RIP. So uh, what I have here is Wind Waker. So let me go ahead and show you Wind Waker and how actually playable it is. So fire up Dolphin again, open, and my Zelda Wind Waker. And it's nice because you get these little save states here. So like I can press, you know, uh, F1, F2 to cycle through my save spots. And there you go, with my uh, Xbox 360 controller here, I am chopping and chopping and doing all that fun stuff that Zelda does. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, aside from, you know, some wonkiness with the emulator, it's still, it's pretty still er, pretty early in the game, but um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, the, the most of the uh, GameCube games run excellently, and you know the Wii games are only getting better and better with every build. So definitely check that out and uh, find all of the details of how to pull all of this off. I know it went really fast, but uh, all of that is in our show notes at hack5.org. I think at this point I am going to go ahead and summon the rest of the Hack 5 crew so we can wrap this bad boy up. Five. 
All right, guys, so we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Pack 5. Uh, I know I did. Uh, Me too. Involved playing video games, and you know, I got a <laughs> very bored of IT this week, so. I'm I got down. to play with a cat the entire time. Uh, didn't you do move the pussy last week? The week oh, before? Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we want to thank Gamefly for sponsoring this week's episode of Hack 5. If you haven't heard of Gamefly, it's basically Netflix for video games. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers a choice of over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at just $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as you like. Uh, Shannon and Darren have both been playing Hawks uh, pretty profusely. Uh, yeah. We, uh, my, myself and Amazing. Paul, were playing Resident Evil 5. Paul, did you ever finish it? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Uh, was it worth a buy? No. No, it was Paul's, worth a rent, and Paul's, that's why you need some Gamefly. Exactly. So fifteen ninety five a month, you guys can head on over to Gamefly.com, and uh, I think it's a coupon, no, Gamefly.com, excuse slash me. Slash Hack 5. Slash Hack 5. Don't need the WWWs. But anyway, <laughs> Don't need uh, so thank you, Gamefly, for sponsoring this week's episode of Hack 5. Are you having fun? Dude, I'm killing people. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm, dude, I'm like Link, and I'm like, oh, super badass. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention in the segment that I just did is if you <laughs> want to get Dolphin actually working, there's two little nuggets there, and that is you need to Are get these? the Microsoft Visual C++ Plus 2008 Service Pack 1. And you're also going to need the latest DirectX runtime uh, and you might as well just go ahead and update your video drivers as well while you're at it. But yeah, you do all those three things and you will be golden when it comes to uh, slashing things as Link. So are those like the three things that take you a couple of hours to figure out because you can't find <sighs> the documentation anywhere? Let's just say vBulletin is not really known for its search function, <laughs> uh, but Google with site colon forms.dolphin-mu.com uh, with the queries and the bullying Much better stuff. than the V-Bolton flu. Oh my god, V-Bolton is horrible. So anyway. Which is why we don't run it. Yeah, what are we running again? Condition it's good stuff. Power IP. New version coming out here soon, yeah, too, by the way. Uh, mm. Speaking of new versions, we are working on the new version of the Hack 5 website, uh, which Darren is working very hard on, right, Darren? Yeah. And good. the new store, which you can get. I just got that huge labeler thing. I'm so excited. I mean, Paul's like, dude, you're becoming that guy. I'm like, dude, it's a hack. I love complex systems. That's why I love trains. It's why I love ATC, uh, air traffic control. That's why I love digital SLRs. Did you see uh, Bat Sim has a spot hops. open for a vice president of communications? Oh, I know, right? So exciting, that dude. That just blew his mind. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so you guys can go over to hack5.org slash uh, Slash stickers for right now. Slash and, stickers. And, and the new website I should have hopefully for uh, 512. That's going to be an epic episode. Dude, 512, that's how much kilobytes of RAM my first computer had. Uh, all the 64K Five, kids are just, just envious right now. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's what's going on. <laughs> so you got stickers. Uh, if you're looking for a pineapple, Darren is still selling them at hack5.org slash pineapple. I'm like the cheetah banana girl. Get your pineapple banana girl. right here. Huh? Chiquita banana. Oh, oh God. What, what are they? Like, ooh. You look a little bit different from the Chiquita banana Chicky. Yeah, I'm thank, sure Paul could God. do something in post to make that work. So uh, I hear Chicago Con's going Chicago on. Chicago Con, yeah, we're pimping dude. them on the website. Yes, so. we are. Chicago Con's awesome. cool. Uh, you know, great guys putting that on. It's it's the same people that do the ethical hacking. And uh, let me tell you about it. They have training Monday, May fourth, going through the eighth. So if you're you know in CISSP stuff, CEH. Um, Certified Ethical Hacker, if you will. Uh, advanced Pen Testing and Social Engineering Master's class. That's the cool thing Ooh. that Movie and I are crazy about. Uh, the guys master. from uh, Tiger Team, if you're familiar with that series. And uh, they've even got, okay, so the conference is 100 bucks. It's the Ethical Hacker Hacking Conference going on that Friday, uh, May 18th through Saturday, uh, the 19th. And they're going to have uh, Capture the Flag with White Wolf Security, with Core nice. Impact, Backtrack 4, Lock Picking 101 career counseling, uh, all sorts of fun hacker stuff. So Speaking of conference, I do want to apologize to Matt and Tom. Mm -hmm. Is it Tom? Yeah, the dark-haired so. one? Yeah. For missing Nauticon. Uh, it's unexcusable. We apologize. I did tell you that I was going to be there. We will definitely be there in force and en masse uh, next year. So oh, that's what uh, I was we'll, telling you about. We'll, I was like, we'll, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how we missed that. It just flew by. Dumb. A little flew bit. By. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, System. Very cool show, another show on Revision 3. 
Catch System this Monday as it celebrates its 100th episode. The guys are putting together an overly elaborate contraption to light the candles on the cake. Will it work? Will the candles be lit? Find out. David and Pat will be avoiding eating the cake to preserve their manly figures. Who knows? Check it out. System every Monday. Revision3.com slash S-Y-S-T-M. You can't spell anything correctly on this network. Of course nope. not. Yeah. Hack, system. You see that new show, Coop? Tech. Pretty good. Coop. Yes. Coop. Coop. Yeah. Hey, Coop's anyone Mr. Coop? <laughs> I love Dude, I love it. I love it. It's a great yeah. show. Yeah, they got a free promo. Anyway, <laughs> um, we do have some viewer questions. Thanks for sticking around for this. So uh -oh. um, we have we have one for you and one for you, and I'm just going to wait. Playing one video for games. me? Yes. Whoa. So uh, J Jacob here, he's got a WordPress blog, and he wants to send some of his visitors from particular IP addresses to not his WordPress blog, maybe some other site. Yep, definitely you know had to. So so what's what's the dealie? What do I download? What do I get? WordPress ban. It's a plugin from WordPress. You just download it straight off the website. When you log in, you can go to the plugin page and download WordPress ban. It lets you it lets you redirect different IPs to whatever site you want them to go to, whether that's bad or not. <laughs> Upside down internet. Lemon party. Oh. Yeah. I win. It works like a charm. <laughs> Hooray. And if you need any information on how to how to write the code for the redirect so you can make them go to a very certain website. Oh, you'll have I the JavaScript on. You. Yeah, put, put the JavaScript up oh, on yeah, snubsy.com. That'd snubsy. be cool. Com. Also, um, uh, says who asks, he, uh, in pertaining to your 3CX series that you did there, he's wondering because he has a Vonage connection, uh, VoIP connection, if he can go ahead and use this in his, his, his network. Yeah, uh, there's uh, I've got a lot of good emails about the 3CX sh shit that I did. Um, there, like you, you, huh? People like VoIP? Yeah. You can use a Vonage adapter. Uh, I don't know if you can use all of the Vonage adapters because there's different manufacturers and so on and so forth. However, uh, a Vonage adapter is basically just a... Uh, ATA? It's, it's, a, it's basically, yeah, it's a gateway. Uh, so you can, I, I don't have the information myself, but I do know that if you head on over to forums.3cx.com and you just type in a Vonage, there's hundreds of different threads and posts that you guys can, uh, that says who. There you go. That says who. Yeah. <laughs> can search on and uh, find out uh, how to set up your Vonage with your 3CM. Excellent. Thank you. I don't All know right, why guys. I did that move right now. Yeah, it's just fun to do those moves. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my don't forget the monkey move and my get in on the coding contest move. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. So anyway, they're kicking me off the show. I've been voted off the island. And uh, one last time, I'm going to remind you guys to trust your techno lust. Bye. Have fun. Us now. Yes. What do you want to do? Party. Hello? It's, it's for you. Hey. You're not a fool. Get a hold of yourself. She's gone. There's nothing you can do. Oh, stupid kid. Yes, I just, just gave you that visual. You did not just don't think of a panda me. You didn't just don't think of a panda. Yeah, Paul's crotch on me. <laughs> Viewers at home, don't think of Paul's crotch. Why? I think but about I think about it, about it every like night. every day.